Hey everybody, Hobby Farm Guys here. I'm Steve. And I'm Brian. And joining us behind the scenes, as always, is Eric. Hello. And today we're going to look at part three of our dirt series, Soil Nutrition. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, so this is our third dirty video, right? Yeah. Uh, first one dealt with soil basics, second one we talked about pH, and those two videos really kind of set the stage for this video where we want to talk about nutrition. Now a lot of people understand the concept of fertilizer, but they sometimes struggle with, you know, what do I put on or how much do I put on, when do I apply it? Um, that's kind of some of the things we want to talk about in this uh, video. Sometimes you'll look out at your plants and you'll see something that's you know turning yellow or getting crinkly and brown or maybe it's getting pale or even purple and they think I, I don't know what's causing this. Um, those are things we want to talk about in today's video yeah. because they're all signs of uh, nutrient imbalances. So our goal in this series has been to help you understand that your soil is like a living organism itself with different interconnected and related parts. Uh, and one of those key parts is nutrition, a very important part, in fact. What you feed your plants, how you feed your plants, and when you feed your plants has a direct uh, impact, not just on the plants themselves, but also on that soil. Right. Keep in mind now, with the exception of foliar sprays that are just absorbed through the leaves, none of the fertilizer that you apply is actually feeding your plants. Right. What you're doing is feeding the soil. The soil takes that fertilizer, absorbs it, often chemically alters it, and then re-releases it in solution into the into the soil where the, where the plants have access to it. Mm -hmm. So just simply dumping fertilizer on the ground, your plants may not get any of that unless your soil is in a condition to make it ready and available to the plants. That's why we spent the first two videos talking about soil tilt and, and pH because they're important factors. Uh, that lead up to how we actually achieve the nutrition that we need in our soil. Right. Yeah, and you can check out those previous videos in this series. We'll leave a link in the description below, or you can check out our playlist uh, for gardening. Uh, of course, the easiest way to get all our videos is to click that subscribe yeah. button. Um, now, today we're going to talk about soil nutrition, though. And nutrition in plants is... It, similar to nutrition in humans, right? You need a, a balanced diet with a variety of different things. And plants need a balanced diet in order to sprout and grow and fruit and reproduce. And if they have either uh, not enough of one type of nutrient or, or even an excess of other nutrients, it can really affect the plant's growth. And sometimes it's just a minor cosmetic issue and sometimes it can be lethal to the plants. Right. And for that reason, it's important that we have the right nutrients in the right quantities, right re relationships in that soil uh, to optimize that growth. Uh, and most of us are familiar with, with the term fertilizing, right? That's just where we're taking anything that we're missing and, and then adding that into the soil. Um, and that's going to be an important part of that soil nutrition. Now, before we go tilling into our soil or spraying or spreading any fertilizer, we have to ask a couple of basic questions. The first is, what nutrients do our plants need and at what levels? And the other question is, what nutrients do our soil already have and at what levels, right? And once we have those, we can figure out what we need to add with our fertilizer. So let's tackle the first question, what do our plants need? Right. So there are actually 18 distinct nutrients that your plants are going to need, but they're going to need them at different various levels uh, from different functions in the plant. We can divide these into two groups. The macronutrients, uh, which the plant uses in large quantity, and then micronutrients, which are used by plants, but only in small quantities. And then we'll further divide the macronutrients into three categories, structural nutrients, primary nutrients, and secondary nutrients. The structural nutrients, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, the plant pulls from the air and water and they form the basic sugars and starches that make up the plant cells and fuel the plant. We really don't need to talk about those. But we do need to talk about the primary nutrients. The big three are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. When you look at fertilizer in the store, you notice that it shows three numbers like 101010 or 2100. Those are actually the concentration of these primary nutrients which the plants use in large quantity. 
But the first number in that sequence always represents nitrogen. Nitrogen is your basic plant food and is present in every protein within the plant and as such will get the lion's share of our discussion today. It promotes vegetative growth. Nitrogen is one of the most common elements on earth but much of it is in a form unusable to plants. Plants pull nitrogen from the soil in two basic forms, ammonium and nitrate. Nitrate is water soluble and is easily absorbed by the plant, but being water soluble, it is also easily leached out of the soil by water, especially in sandy soils. Ammonium, with its positive charge, binds to soil particles and resists leaching. Over time, bacteria in the soil break down the ammonium and convert it into nitrates. Uh, most fertilizers contain a mix of these types of nitrogen. Another one that you'll probably hear is urea. So urea, uh, it breaks down very quickly into ammonium, so we've kind of just lumped it under that umbrella. Uh, so these two different forms, right, ammonium or nitrate, or three if you want to consider urea by itself, they're all important because they're accessible to the plant. Uh, they'll provide your plant with the nitrogen it craves, but they go about it in slightly different ways. Also, when they're added into the soil, natural processes take place, changing from one to another, right? So urea becomes ammonium, ammonium then becomes nitrates. And understanding that, plus a little bit of chemistry, will help you get a clearer picture of what's going on in your garden. Urea has no charge. Ammonium, a positive charge, and nitrate, a negative charge. We already mentioned that ammonium's strong positive charge helps it to bind to soil particles and resist leaching. But that isn't the only important aspect of ionic charge. You see, plants like balance. So when they take up a negative nitrate, they will typically release a negative ion like hydroxide back into the soil to maintain balance. Over time, this can raise the soil pH. When plants take up a positive ammonium, they typically release a hydrogen ion into the soil lowering the pH over time. But at the same time, the soil is breaking down ammonium not absorbed by the plant yet into a nitrate. But when those nitrates are taken up by the plant, the plants release hydroxide that tend to balance things out a bit. So another thing to note here is plants will take up and store nitrogen when it's available mm -hmm. for later on. Okay, now if they take up those nitrates and store them, that's not a problem. It, it doesn't cause any issues, but ammonium can cause issues. Plants will eagerly again take that up if it's available, but ammonium, while a plant needs it and uses it, in high levels it causes what's called ammonium toxicity. And it's, and it's not great for your plants, right? So have you ever gone out and looked at your tomatoes, seen the tips of the leaves, they get all curled up and brown, right? That could be ammonium toxicity. My guess is, right, so you probably applied an ammonium-based fertilizer and then the weather turned cool, maybe include a little bit of rain, which kind of uh, soaked the soil. So when the soil gets cool and wet, microbial activity slows down. So ammonium is converted to nitrate at a slower pace, leaving the you know, higher levels of ammonium in the soil. So the plant stocks up on the ammonium and then boom, you end up with brown crispy leaves on the edge of your tomato plants. Now it's possible to actually burn plants by giving them too much nitrogen. Uh, we've probably all seen at one point that guy, or even been that guy, uh, who has burned stripes in the lawn because of uh, improper uh, spreading of fertilizer on the lawn. So be careful with nitrogen. Your plants absolutely need it, but you want to make sure that you're applying the right form in the right amount. Too little, and you'll get small scraggly plants and leaves that turn yellow. Too much, and you may get a tomato plant that looks like a small tree, but has no tomatoes as the plant was too focused on vegetative growth from the nitrogen. Right, and well, a big, beautiful tomato plant is a, is a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. I'm also more interested in a big, beautiful tomato. Right. Right, which brings us to our second primary nutrient, the second number on the fertilizer bag, and that's phosphorus. Right, now phosphorus is used for a number of things inside the plant. It helps with the metabolic processes and all that kind of stuff. But really the thing you want to remember about phosphorus is that it's key in root development and flowering, right? Which when I talk about flowering, that's blossoms, that's that's your fruit, that's your actual produce that you're talking about in a lot mm -hmm. of these plants. So very, very important, right? If you don't have enough phosphorus, you end up with kind of weak, spindly plants that don't do very well. 
Uh, too much phosphorus is actually pretty uncommon. It, it doesn't really happen that often, but it can. Uh, what, what happens is, is plants won't take up too much, but excess phosphorus in the soil can lead to uh, pH issues and, and things where some of your micronutrients like, like magnesium and iron start to get locked up and become unavailable. So it causes problems in that way uh, with yeah. too much phosphorus. And the final nutrient, that third number on the bag, is potassium, also called uh, potash. And potassium is essential for plant development and growth. It's going to affect the, the size, the coloring, the taste of the fruit in your plants. And it really plays a vital role in the overall health of the plant. Too little potassium results in stunted growth, yellow leaves, and loss of overall health and resiliency. Like phosphorus, potassium isn't typically absorbed in excess by the plant, but excess amounts in the soil can block the absorption of other micronutrients like iron, zinc, or magnesium. So an easy saying to remember when we're talking about uh, plant growth and, and fertilizer is simply up, down, and all around. The first number, nitrogen, up, right? It promotes vigorous growth. Second number, phosphorus, down. It takes care of the roots also takes care of the, the fruits and things that we're going to gobble down, right? And the third number, uh, potash or potassium, is the overall health, the all-around health of the plant. Right. So nitrogen up, phosphorus down, potassium all around. These are the three primary nutrients, and they're essential to your plants and in significant quantities as well. But there's also some secondary nutrients that are important to your plants as well, also in pretty significant quantities. So the secondary nutrients for your plants are sulfur, which is used by the plant to construct proteins and important enzymes, magnesium, which is the central atom in the chlorophyll molecule that the plant uses to capture energy from the sun, and calcium, which is used to hold together cell walls and coordinate cellular activities. So the remaining nutrients your plant needs are called micronutrients. Right? Each one performs important functions in the plant, but is needed in only very small quantities compared to the other nutrients we've already discussed. So micronutrients include things like iron, boron, copper, chlorine, manganese, molybdenum, zinc, cobalt, and nickel. So there's lots of different nutrients that your plants need, and there's lots of little things that affect how those nutrients are taken up by the plant. Now, if you go out to your garden and you see yellowing leaves on your plants, don't assume it's a nitrogen deficiency, which is a common cause of yellowing leaves. Don't assume. Test your soil, right? Uh, there's lots of different things that can cause yellowing leaves, different uh, nutrient deficiencies, disease pests. Make sure you know what you're dealing with. Test kits are relatively cheap, or you can go to your extension office and for a small fee, they'll probably test your soil as well. Right. So the last thing we need to talk about before we go is how to calculate coverage. So let's say you discover you need to add nitrogen to your soil at a rate of one pound per thousand square feet. Right. You have two bags of fertilizer. The first is on a train that leaves Chicago at 8 a.m. traveling 70 miles per hour. <laughs> just, just kidding. Let's say your first bag is 10, 10, 10, and the second is 26, 5, 10. You also have a neighbor that offers you composted cow manure that he says is around 213. Now the numbers on the bag are percentages. In other words, if I put 100 pounds of 101010 10 fertilizer down, I'd be applying a total of 10 pounds of nitrogen. 100 pounds of 26510 gives me roughly 26 pounds of nitrogen. And 100 pounds of manure would give me about 2 pounds of nitrogen. Right. So if I want one pound of nitrogen per a thousand square feet, and let's say I have a 2,000 square foot garden, right, then I need two pounds of nitrogen total. Now fertilizer typically isn't sold in 100 pound bags because, right, who wants to lift that? Yeah, I know. Uh, but the bag may be 20 pounds. So if a 100 pound bag has 10 pounds, then a 20 pound bag has two pounds, right? So I'd simply use the 20 pound bag to get the two pounds of nitrogen I need for my 2,000 square foot garden. Just a quick discussion on organic versus chemical fertilizers. Right now, I recognize there are some strong opinions on both sides of this. Right. Um, at the end of the day, honestly, your, your plants don't care. Right? Your plant wants nitrate. It's going to take up nitrate. It cannot distinguish whether that nitrate came from a factory or from a cow. 
it doesn't care, it just wants the nitrate. Um, that being said, there are some differences, um, some advantages and disadvantages to both that we want to look at. Yeah, so your chemical fertilizers are generally inexpensive and readily available. Right, they're man-made, and so the quantities of different nutrients is going to be well controlled. Chemical fertilizers are generally fast acting, allowing you to see results quickly. Now, some disadvantages include the fact that while they help plants grow, they do nothing to sustain and support the soil. And also, because of their concentrated quick release formula, it's easier to over fertilize or burn the plants. The fertilizer, not quickly absorbed, is quickly leached away from the plant and ends up in waterways causing pollution. And over time, it can lead to a buildup of toxic chemicals in the soil. Right. So manure, on the other hand, is the ultimate slow-release fertilizer, slowly feeding and improving the soil in which your plants live. Now, it may also contain an array of micronutrients, and it's far less likely to lead to a buildup of toxins and salts. On the downside, Manure can be expensive depending upon where you live, right? So I have two dairies and a feedlot within two miles of me, so I have access to cheap manure. But if you're biting in bags, manure can be extremely expensive, right? And also with manure, you don't know exactly what you have from a nutrient standpoint. And often those values are going to be lower than what you could expect to get from a manufactured alternative. Oh, yeah. Then there's the whole smell thing, oh, yeah. right? Now, personally, I love manure. I put it in my garden every year as I try and kind of build up that soil and, and, and increase the soil tilt. Mm -hmm. um, and then I fill in gaps as needed throughout the year with chemical fertilizers. Right. So that's our discussion on nutrients. Now, if we glossed over something or skipped something you think is important, please let us know in the comments below. And in the meantime, use that knowledge of nutrients to help your plants grow big and strong and, and get great vegetables and fruits out of them. Take care. We'll see you later. Bye. We're out. I'm Eric with the Hobby Farm Guys. Obviously, I'm the best looking of the three, but you don't get to see me very often. So smash that like button. Subscribe to our channel so you can see new videos every Thursday. And most importantly, leave comments down below so we can hear from you.